counselors. Uh, some of you in this chamber I've known for 20 or 30 years. Each one of you, regardless of where you stand on the political spectrum, have an obligation now, a responsibility to show leadership on this file. All the emails that are referenced in the uh, uh, chart at the back, in the appendix, by the auditors, all those emails must be released so the public can see for themselves, can read for themselves the exact language that was used by the principals to, des to describe the situation at hand and their actions. The mayor must show leadership by releasing the uh, report that was pre uh, being prepared by Mr. Shegel and Mr. Ruda so that the public can compare their version of events, their version of the propriety improprieties with the version found by the audit. This is not a contained problem and that's why we have to get to the bottom of the scandal. And there should definitely, in my opinion, be a rule for a police investigation, although I don't believe it can be conducted by the Winnipeg police because of the relationship between the administration and the appointment of the new chief, which is not a shot at either party. It is a matter of public perception. There's plenty of evidence that the parties involved in some of these dealings were more than just passing strangers, and many of us can speak to that. If this was Montreal, there would be a massive inquiry and the fact that this file dragged for a year has, in fact, made Winnipeg among taxpayers. It's made the council building a, uh, a place where there is not the respect that there should be for the way things are done with taxpayers' money. There's a bigger scandal in this that I, I was quite surprised to read last night. That property at 1780 Taylor was commercially worthless. And I, I stumbled across this uh, and I covered it on my TV show on Shaw. The developer had been turned down for a preferred uh, zoning change so they'd get a drive through in. They couldn't maneuver that property into anything that they found was going to be productive. And then the caveat, which I also was the first to uncover, that was filed by the city on that property, uh, that was written by city lawyers, was not worth the paper was written on. The audit sh shows that that caveat failed in at least five ways to protect taxpayers. And clearly, there was one obvious bene uh, beneficiary of all these moves, and that would be the developer, Shindico. And only a criminal investigation can dig deeper as to the motive and possible kickbacks or other benefits to unknown persons, and that must be done to restore public confidence. Once again, and I've appeared here how many times the past couple of years to talk about public consultation, once again, public consultation was manipulated, in this case in July 2011 in St. James, to ram through a pet project of the powerful. Even so, there was a red flag raised that was not only ignored, but was ridiculed. Councillor Fielding could have exposed the fire hall scandal in July 2012 if he had listened to the letter from the Viscount Gort that was sent to the community. He must release that letter, and then he must apologize to Viscount Gort officials for saying they were trying to mislead the public when it appears they were trying to alert the neighborhood that something had changed in the scope of the St. James Station that it had been moved on the property itself, and that it was not what was put forward at the public consultation a year earlier. Similarly, in November of 2012, Councillor Swandell made a reference to uh, uh, the Spanish Inquisition event that happened uh, to understand why the administrative perspective was and why things happened the way they, they were. That is when the administration was called before the committee chaired by Councillor Avexpec. The audit shows that the so-called perspective was to conceal knowledge of shortcuts, conceal knowledge of wrongdoing, favoritism to the developer. Councillor Swandell owes an apology to Councillor Havexpec for criticizing her efforts to get straight answers and protect the taxpayers. And I'd also suggest that Councillor Gerbassi is also owed an apology because her instincts about what could go wrong inside the City Hall administrative processes were in fact borne out by this audit. Do we have a double standard of what is criminal? In this city, people can get arrested and hauled off for as little as, uh, you know, stealing a can of spam. When there's $3 million of taxpayers' money lost, it cannot be easily dismissed, and the public will not accept that. Don't be afraid to ask for an out-of-province governance review so that independent eyes can look at this, and as Councillor Edie suggested, the, this place can be reformed and move forward and be more democratic. And as Bob uh, Axford said, <clears throat> The lack of confidence that the taxpayers now have in the administration and council is startling and it's disturbing. And there have to be concrete steps taken to restore that confidence and to ensure that people know that their tax dollars are being dealt with fairly and wisely and not being tossed around in a manner that shows any favoritism to anybody, developer or otherwise. Thank you.
Any questions for Mr. Oxford and Mr. Gold? Seeing none, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, Mr. Saunders.